Hello, my name is Kayla Meyer. Today I'm going to be giving a demonstration of workflow approval management. The nice thing about workflow approval management is it uses some of the same functionalities as Andy's workflow. But once you have everything configured in Andy's workflow, you can actually have your super users or your department experts configure the approval process in Andy's Unity client. So let's go ahead and get started in Andy's Studio. We're going to log in. And the first thing we're going to want to do is select workflow in our ribbon. Select approval processes. And you're going to want to create a new approval process. So let's go ahead and select add. You would want to provide a name for your approval process. So, um, First, you can add a description. You would have wanted to, you would want to identify the document types, your user groups, your approval users, approval users can be both by user groups and approval roles. Keyword type, any form fields you may be using. So if you have a Unity form and you have a field on there that is not a keyword, this is where you would be identifying those fields. Your notifications. So with the OnBase Workflow Approval Management, also known as WAM, you would need to create an initial notification, which should be a global notification, not specific to any lifecycle. And then any time you want that notification to be sent out again as a reminder or on some type of timer, you would need to add those additional notifications down here in the reminder notification area. And then you have any additional options here. As I mentioned before, here on our um, approval users, we have our user groups and our approval roles. If we were going to use approval roles, we would also need to configure those in OnBase Studio. Let's go ahead and take a look. Again, we're going to our workflow in our ribbon and selecting approval roles. You would then do an add. You would provide a name that makes sense to the approval role. From there, you can select if you're doing this by user, keyword type, maybe a SQL query, uh, Unity script. And this send to air queue if no user are found is very important because if you have something going to queue and there is no approval role found or a user found for that approval role, they could send, the system can send an error to an air queue to let you know that this document does not have an approval assigned. Depending on what option you select would make your option here visible on the site. So we have users, we can select users, we can select from our available users. It would change it to keyword type, again, then we can see our keyword types, so on and so forth. So we've configured our approval processes, and we've configured our approval roles. The next thing we need to do is actually create our workflow approval management, workflow lifecycle, and queues. We can do this by either going in and selecting a current workflow queue, if there's one that you already have set up and you want to add this to it, or you can create a new lifecycle. So let's go ahead and select a current lifecycle that we have. I'm just going to select the AP invoice approval processing. We need to, of course, check this lifecycle out. Once we check it out, we then need to go to our lifecycle up in our ribbon. And we can select approval queue. 
we would name our approval queue just like we would name any other queue. I do recommend putting something along the lines of WAM or workflow approval management, you know, it's kind of long in your queue name so you know that this is the workflow approval management queue within this lifecycle. Once you have the queue configured, you need to then identify all the queues that these documents will route to. So the difference with workflow approval management is there is only one queue that does all the approval. Where in other workflow cycles, you may be used to having a queue for your managers and a queue for your directors and a queue for your C-level people. That no longer will be the case. All your approvals will be done in one queue. And it will just be load balanced so that way only certain people can see them at a time. And then once the, the approval takes place, then the document will route to the other queues. The other queues would then be identified here. You can select queues that you already have in your system or you can create new queues. Once you've created everything in Studio, now we want to create our actual workflow approval, which that is done in the Unity client. The workflow approval can be created by your on-base system administrator, or again, your department expert users, if they have the security to do so. Once you have your Unity client open, Great. Once you log into your on-base Unity client, you will go to your approval management. Again, you do need the access to see this and be assigned one of these queues. And then we would select the new approval management that we have set up in the on-base studio. From there, we have two different options. We can create an auto approval path, or we can create the approval path. The auto approval paths mean that you can create conditional logic that says if this document, if this keyword, or this value, automatically approve the document. It does not need any user interaction at that point. It would then just go to the next two in your license. If you did not want to use an auto approval and you wanted to set your path with your goals, you can click on your approval pass, right click, and let's go ahead and add a new path. Again, you would want to provide a name for this path. I would suggest again making it as descriptive as possible, but not too long. You can also provide a description. And then you want to start configuring the conditions. So right here, do we want to say all the following conditions are true? Any of them are true? Evaluate a document type, a keyword, a Unity form field, or run a Unity script? And we can keep adding additional logic after that. So if all the conditions below this are true, so let's, let's select another one. So we want to evaluate our keyword type, our keyword of invoice amount. Uh, let's see, is equal to, does not equal, is blank, is not blank, is less than, is less than or equal to, greater than or greater than, greater than or equal to. So here we've got anything under $500. So our keyword of invoice amount would be less than the value of five. Maybe we want to add some additional conditions after that. All we do is keep adding the condition button to configure them. We don't need any of them that we do not need any longer. And once we're done, we can hit OK. Now you see that we have our first 
approval path for invoices under $500. The next thing we would want to do is identify who can approve these. So we have this, always use this level, and we have option of all must approve. If we right click and modify this, we could change that. So we can have it where everybody needs to approve this. So all the managers in your organization that have the approval uh, role or the user group, depending on how you set up these approvals, can all need to approve this document before it can go to the next level, or anyone can approve it, which means anyone within this group can approve it. Once one person approves it, it moves to the next two. This is how you would set up workflow approval management in the Unity client. Again, because it is a Unity client, anyone can set these rules up. It is designed so that way your department that know their business processes actually do this configuration for you as long as you give them the correct access. There's tons of different options to choose from here. So I would recommend making sure that your business owners, expert users have access to the medical reference guide to explain all the different conditions that they're able to use. Thank you very much and have a great day.